All right, we are recording. I well, hope everybody had a great weekend and that uh, feeling good, creating your evolved identity and uh, I, I was just doing my own vision work and, and getting into my affirmations and changing them up a little or evolving them a little bit. And so my mind's still kind of there. It's like, I wanted to keep going. <clears throat> I'll get back to doing it. Hey, Gabe. Cause I can do what I want when I want for as long as I want. Yeah. Hey, Gabe, uh, I've got Chloe on the line, brand new manager. Awesome. Brand new manager. And uh, that, uh, that thing I texted you about was um, I, I'm going to meet with them at four Pacific, which is five year time. And we're going to do a, um, a planning session. They're familiar with the template. So I, I, um, I thought maybe you might be able to join us for a little bit. Yep. I think I can do that. That'll be exciting. Congratulations, okay. Chloe. Yeah. Chloe, I wanted to watch, watch her uh, just blossom. And, like, and, and, and her person, Angela. I think Angela is going to be on here pretty quick. And Angela is also a manager. So uh, manager oh, wow. under manager. Wow. Yeah. yeah, it's a double header. <laughs> yeah, moving forward. It's exciting. It's what we focus on, you guys. And, you know, I, I as well as anybody can be distracted. And uh, you really got to really guard your focus with your life. And the inception stage really puts us into a high, high level of focus. It's what it does. And it's a matter of maintaining that and managing that. And uh, it's easy to get distracted, especially in today's day and age. So, but when we stay focused on what we want and who we are becoming, uh, that's what ends up expanding. And it's exciting. It's really exciting because when we get distracted, we could feel like the world is in control. And it's not. Um, our circumstances and what we experience. I like how Tony, I posted that new uh, YouTube of Tony Robbins in the Forever Pack business group. He talks about if you went to a party and you were just looking through the eye of the camera, right? And all you're focused on is a very limited part. And he says, of course, that's gonna be your world because that's all you see. And we can walk around and do that with our lives. You think your life and how you're experiencing it, experiencing it is all that life has to offer you? It's we start looking at life. Well, we look at life through, in a sense, a camera. And you only see a very, very, very small part. I remember somebody talking about the law of abundance uh, in a book, Sterling W. Sills. And he said, you know, the law of abundance is that only a small fraction, a sliver, of the sun's rays reflect and hit the earth and provide the life and energy that it does to this planet. The rest of what's the sun is going in all the other directions goes off into cold, dark, empty space. Wasted. So he says, really, the law of abundance, there's more abundance than anything. He says, farmers have a hard time trying to figure out what they're going to do with the overabundance of food that they grow grow one tomato and if you've ever grown tomato plants I have a, such a clear picture of tomato plants just overtaking everything and so you can grow one tomato and out of that plant and have a million by the end of the season and uh, it's just so true so there's so much more than what we can see in life there's an abundance of anything that you want. And maybe that's the problem. Maybe people are just like a you know, squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. Anything that looks appealing gets their attention. Anything that tantalizes the emotions gets our attention. But it's the conscious creator that you know, really sets the objective. And that objective is enough to really pull them and not allow them to be distracted. Um, I think that's the key is, is having a vision and something that just can't be denied. You can't get distracted. And the time that I will say admittedly that I wanted that the most was when I, when I was the most hungry was when we were living paycheck to paycheck and my kids were wearing hand-me-down clothes and our window on our house was broken for years and the house was in need of repairs and we were driving a car that smoked out the back 
like a smoke screen when you came up to a stoplight. So I'd learn how to slow down 100 yards away from the light so we didn't have to stop because it would smoke like crazy. Like you wouldn't be able to see the cars behind you. And, uh, you know, having a newspaper out, having to fix cars at night. So when I was the most hungry, that's when I was the most focused on when I started learning these things. There's never been a time like that where that was, I was one track mind creating that new identity. I was listening to Tony this morning. He says, it's more than just positive thinking. Positive thinking, you, you stop for a moment and you start to think. Like he says, that's the problem with positive thinking. You have to stop and think about it. What we're talking about here, what Wallace Waddles is talking about is creating an identity, something that you don't, something that you don't have to think about. And, uh, you know, that it, we've driven it in so much that it's rewired us, just like reprogramming a computer. And that's where, you know, for the first 30, 60, 90 days, you have to really eliminate the distractions and just keep driving it in. I have never done that like I've done it in the beginning. I've done it and I've created, you know, some of the things that I have above and beyond that beginning, you know, of getting into isogenics. But to be honest, I just haven't quite done it. I've never been as hungry as I was back in the beginning. Now I am hungry, don't get me wrong. Um, I recruit myself pretty much every morning with my vision. But it's just, again, you know, not being distracted and, and maintaining that on that level of being hungry, 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 like where I'm in a famine, uh, like needing to breathe when you're underwater and that's all you focus on. To be quite honest, it hasn't happened like that since the beginning, although I have had semblances of it that have helped me to accomplish the things that I have since. Uh, but again, don't get me wrong, I am still hungry. It's just I'm not in a famine. And I can create that famine scenario. I totally can. Um, and I do it in bursts. And those bursts do, they, they do impact. You know, and a, and, and a blitz for me is 30 days. I could do it in a 30-day period. And I have many times <laughs> over the last 15 years. Um, but to really turn it around and pull out those weeds and, and not just pull the weeds out, but implant them with, you know, replace them because the universe abhors a vacuum. So if I pull a weed out, meaning something that's not part of the identity and it has to be, you, you identify those things. You don't get them all up front and uh, repla replacing them with the flower and, and totally coming up with that and, and putting, adding that on to the identity. Um, at the end of your vision. That's why my vision just got longer and longer. I kept, I had to create new flowers, a new identity to replace something that wasn't serving me, whether it was negative or it just didn't relate or it wasn't there. It was something that was missing that needed to be there, like being wealthy. Being wealthy was one, but that was one that I noticed right up front. It was these other little ones that were like that, like I needed to have the wealth piece in there as my identity, but there were other little weeds that I needed to identify that didn't serve the total identity that I wanted. And, and so I had to frame those up just like I did the wealth piece into my new identity. Um, and so my vision just got longer and longer. I, I love what he says. Well, you know, it's important what he says here. You must lay aside, when he talks about there's a thinking stuff from which all things are made, which in its original state permeates, penetrates, and fills the inner spaces of the universe. A thought in this stuff, substance produces the thing that is imaged by the thought. Do you see that there's not another party in that scenario? It's you as an individual. There's nobody else involved in that thought becoming a thing. There isn't any other individual. Man can form things in his thought and by impressing his thought upon formless substance can cause the thing he thinks about to be created. Do you see how it eliminates anybody else's fault? Anybody else's judgment? Anybody else's needing to live up to me being able to accomplish that? it eliminates any excuses of anybody else 
being involved in that. And I'm going to say it. Here it comes. Are you ready? Even God. It eliminates God from your destiny. It eliminates God from you creating the life that you want to create. It eliminates everybody. It eliminates your spouse. It eliminates your, the people you're surrounded by. It eliminates your boss. It eliminates everybody. A thought in this substance produces the thing that is imaged by the thought. Where does the thought originate? From within you. Now, I know that there's some clarity that needs to be framed up around that. That's the way it works. First of all, he says, you must lay aside all other concepts of the universe than this monistic, monistic one. You must lay aside that there's some, I think he were, they, I've heard the word used, a capricious God. I need to look up the word capricious God. That is plain favorites. I wonder if capricious goes along with that, like favoritism. Caprice, a sudden unpredictable change. Okay, so yeah, like you're not in control. All of a sudden there's some unpredictable change that God's going to will upon you. A tendency to change one's mind without apparent or adequate motive. Whimsic whimsicality. All right, so... Uh, I think too many people use that as an excuse for their lack of will, their lack of discipline in controlling their thoughts and their feelings and their emotions. And so uh, Raymond Hollywell says it in the book, Working with the Law, God's will be done is the most overused, misunderstood statement. God's will be done. I hear very faithful people use it all the time. If God's will be done, then uh, that just doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense. Look at the world around us. Look how many people are sick and getting sicker. Why are they getting sicker? Because man has made more of a food-like stuff. People have chosen to eat more of that food-like stuff that isn't living the principle of health. And God's will, I'm sure, is not that we all get sick and we start having degenerative diseases at younger and younger ages and end up in full-time assisted living centers in our 40s now. And all the suffering that's going on, that is due to a choice of, you know, deciding to put Pop-Tarts in and, and uh, what's that donut? Krispy Kreme donuts and... And, and, and breaking those, those principles. See, God's already done his part. For 99% of people and the things they're experiencing, God's already done his part. He's woven in the principle of cause and effect into the fabric of everything. Now, are there miracles where God can intervene? Absolutely, there are miracles. But it, usually those miracles come based on the faith of the individual. And so then it still comes down to what's the individual thinking that's causing those miracles to happen in their lives. They're exercising a degree of faith. And, and so the miracles that we can experience in our lives can be self-induced and they are self-induced. Now, how those miracles take place I don't know how people become inspired through my thoughts. I don't know how my thoughts travel through the air and land on other people and attract them and then cause some of them to even call me. When they say, look, they don't come knocking on your door. Yeah, in some cases they do. But I'm still getting into action when those calls come from some unexpected place. I don't know how that happens. I just know that thoughts are things and that when I think in a certain way, certain and scientific way, miracles start happening in my life that are in favor and are in alignment with the objectives that I set up around those thoughts. So to use, well, what do you think about this? Or what do you think about that? Or what do you think about the phrase, um, 
uh, somebody brought it up to me the other day. It was um, it was something along the line. It wasn't, you know, um, God's will be done, but it was something like that, which excluded God from it. And I just said, well, there are no coincidences, but then you really have to back that up with, there aren't any coincidences because thoughts are things and you don't attract when you want to attract. You're always attracting. It can't be turned off. You're always attracting 24 seven. So some things might seem coincidental or chaotic because somebody's not consciously aware of what they're really focusing on. But if you start to focus on anything for a certain amount of time, it's going to grow and it's going to start to manifest around you, whether you know that that's what you're doing or not. So um, how much better to know? All right, so let's go back to the book. So you must lay aside all other concepts of the universe than this monistic one, and you must dwell upon this until it is fixed in your mind and has become your habitual thought. Read these creed statements over and over again. Fix every word upon your memory and meditate upon them until you firmly believe what they say. If a doubt comes to you, cast it aside as a sin. Do not listen to arguments against this idea. Do not go to churches or lectures where a contrary concept of things is taught or, or preached. Do not read magazines or books which teach a different idea. If you get mixed up in your faith, all your efforts will be in vain. Do not ask why these things are true, nor speculate as to how they can be true. Simply take them on as trust. Take them on trust. The science of getting rich begins with this absolute acceptance of this faith. There were some things that really made sense to me about this. And as an individual, I always felt that I was a child of God and that I had the capacity and the possibility within me to behave and to co-create like God does. I really believe that that's our destiny. And so it really put the ball in my court. You know, it was, it was really my opportunity. And so I did take it on trust and, and just didn't try to figure out why that couldn't be right. I think a lot of people come into things like this as to why that couldn't be right why it shouldn't be right, why it isn't right, and then look for those confirming evidences. And I love how Tony frames up in that YouTube that your mind will come up with some way to confirm the questions you ask in the way that you ask them. It's always searching and looking for a way, even if it's an erroneous framed up question in a way, why isn't this true? It'll find a way for you to be convinced that it isn't true. If you ask the question, why isn't this true? Why isn't this the way that it works? And uh, so he just, he kind of goes over how to ask empowering questions. I have a book that's called The Magic is in Asking the Right Questions because your mind will always come up and frame up and answer and can't not, it's just the way it works. Um, so that's the end of that chapter, chapter four. Going into chapter five, increasing life. Um, again, you know, I just want to go back to about it doesn't take God out of it. And uh, yeah, I, I just see that Jojo made a comment about that audio. It is amazing. It's 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 incredible. He really sits down, and I don't know how new that video is, but Tony even seems like he's evolving. You know, when we started doing the podcast, we didn't want to like, we didn't want to make money off of it. We just wanted to share what we felt empowered us and that it will empower other people. And it seems like some of these personal development, the, 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 the big ones, the ones that really get it and have made the most of their life, and it's pretty obvious to see that, have become more and more concerned with getting the information out there rather than trying to monetize it. And uh, Tony's, I, I, I'm not a huge follower of Tony. You know, there's things I like about him and, and that I've heard recently on some of these videos um, that I've really, I've really connected with. 
uh, Bob Proctor, I would say, is the one that teaches these principles on a deep level. Um, that's the living, leading, foremost expert on it today. And he just keeps going over the same things, the same principles. Um, but for some reason, Tony's resonated with me, you know, as, as far as probably has to do with my affirmation. I wanted to be a, you know, a high fourth level leader um, and being able to in, inspire people to self discover. I think he does that in at least the things that I've listened to. I, I don't listen to a lot of this stuff, but the things that I've listened to recently, uh, those two, 30 minutes for the next 30 years of your life. And then I don't know what this other one's called. Um, I could look up in my phone because I saved it, but I'm not going to. I posted it in the Forever Pack business group. Um, again, just going back to, it doesn't take God out of it. In fact, it has brought God more into my life and has really woken up the scriptures to me to really see and I, it's one of those things when you see it, you wonder why other people don't see it. So there's people that I'm particularly thinking of right now, specifically, who say, well, God's will be done. And, and I just wonder how it is they don't see it in the scriptures, you know, that that's not an empowering phrase. You know, it actually gives you the ability to be victim or to, to fault your lack of success on somebody else and it just doesn't fly you know for me and i don't see how it does for others but I, I get it it's looking through that camera and not seeing the rest of the world so let's just jump into chapter five and see where this goes i don't pre-read any of this um just going off of inspiration as we go through it what stands out um, and, and does God know the end from the beginning? Yeah, I, he's omnipotent, he's all powerful. Could he step into my life? Yeah, but his plan wasn't that, to do that. His plan was free will, free agency, and knowing that we would grow. Uh, it was the adversary wanting to force everybody to do everything, and there, it just doesn't work that way. It's a, communism is a, and Jim Rohn, I love how he talks about communism, in, one of his audios it's one of those ways that force people and it takes away the creativity and the drive and the, the, the inspiration and the motivation um it's it's a it's a there's always mimics the devil always mimics what god does but he does it in in the opposite way and uh you know, taking away people's free agency and act to will to and to to act and create uh uninhibitedly is god's plan so all right increasing life you must get rid of the last vestige of the old idea that there is a deity whose will it is that you should be poor or whose purposes may be served by keeping you in poverty again somebody will use that well as god's will but he wants me to be rich in heaven i mean where's the sense in that he wants me to be broke now, but if I am faithful, I'll be rich in heaven. It just doesn't make sense, but your mind will make sense of it um, if you allow it to. The intelligent substance, which is all and in all, and which lives in all and lives in you, is a consciously living substance. Being a consciously living substance, it must have the nature and inherent desire of every living intelligence for increase of life. So again, okay, well that would stand in the face of God's will is that I am broke and that I be in poverty. Um, but yet there's this living substance that is for the increase of life, more for all, less for none, more for all, less for none. Look at a tomato plant. I used to draw tomato plants on my affirmation cards and I would just draw them out and I'd put the little red tomatoes and I would draw a lot of them and and then I would put four star by one of the tomatoes two star by one of the tomatoes one star platinum maxed out and then off of that I would draw a vine and then more tomatoes would grow and then out of all of those tomatoes that grew from that one vine that split off and started with one tomato uh, there would be a surround with a bunch of tomatoes I had them all over my card. I like doing that. I like drawing and then writing around them. 
and then uh, I would draw a bunch of tomatoes and then around one tomato I would put you know six star and then have a vine come off of that and it would it would have several vines coming off of it and there would be a tomato that would grow a whole nother tomato plant and on that tomato plant there would be a bunch of tomatoes and that one person that was a four star created all of those tomatoes it just reminded me that of my garden in my backyard and the tomatoes would overtake everything i didn't trim them back um so there's and and then reading things that would be confirming evidences to me about the law of abundance um and holly Wells working with the law and i i actually i've only ever taken one online course and it was bob proctor and mary morrissey in working with the law and there's an audio that goes with it and and things that you can print out and i just remember Mary Morrissey, and she said a few things in that book that I really liked. Um, one was that you can scoop as much as you want from the infinite, and there's still an infinite amount left. You can never overtake you, the amount that you want. You could never take too much. Like, I don't take, if, if JoJo and I are laying out at the beach, I can't take all of the sun. <laughs> I could take as much of the sun as I want, but I can't take all of it. I can't take so much that there's not going to be enough left for Jojo. And if you've ever been to Huntington Beach, I know Dave has. If you've ever been to Huntington Beach in the middle of the summer, there's a lot of people out there. And not one person is taking more than their share of the sun. <coughs> so uh, she also said that she picked up her granddaughter. It was her turn to watch her for the week. Not her turn, it was just she was going to be able to watch her granddaughter for the week. And uh, she had a new car with a DVD player in it. And here's this young child, probably five, six, seven years old, who loved the DVD player, but within two days, she was unsatisfied with just the DVD player. I mean, it was the ultimate, it was a brand new thing that she'd never experienced before, getting to watch movies as they drive down the street and be entertained. And within two days, she was already unsatisfied. She said, Grandma, I wish your car baked cookies and cakes. And so she was already, that's the infinite intelligence that's always coming through us. It's coming to and through us. How it does it, I don't know. Some people say it comes through the crown of your head. You know, I don't know where it comes into me. I just know that there is something that keeps breathing me and keeps my thoughts going. I can't turn my thoughts off even when I'm asleep. And that that's, a, that's a, a source, it's an intelligence, it's a power. And it's always seeking the increase of life. Uh, Raymond Hollywell, or it might be Wallace Waddles that says it about the child playing at the piano. And um, he says, I, this little child was playing the piano and they just started hitting the keys. Like I do that, I play the drums and sometimes I feel a beat and I can't get all four limbs to work independently and I can't get that beat the exact way I can hear it in my head. And I just like pound all the drums out of frustration. And then I take a deep breath and then try again. And it's that infinite intelligence that's seeking for that beautiful music to come out through this child. Now if the child practices and masters the piano, they'll be able to play what is coming to and through them. And, and I've experienced that on the drums. I've experienced it on the motocross track. I've experienced it as, uh, you know, an isogenics associate wanting to share with other people. So that desire for you to share with other people absolutely means that you can accomplish that desire. It's just about figuring out how to do that, how to master that. So this intelligence substance, which is in all, and that's not causing the, the rain to only rain on a few people and the sun only gets to shine on a few people. The intelligent substance, which is all and in all, you and me, we both get it equally. And a part is the same in kind and quality as the whole. A part is the same in kind and quality as a whole. And if it's coming to all of us, then what do I have to do to get my share? It's a good question to ask yourself, what do I have to do to get my share? Whatever that share is to you. 
the canvas is blank, you get to pick which colors and which brushes to use and which strokes. In which lives in all and lives in you is a consciously living substance. Being consciously, being a consciously living substance, it must have the nature and inherent desire of every living intelligence for increase of life. Everything, every living thing must continually seek for the enlargement of its life. Because life in the mere act of living must increase itself. And as I really thought about that, some inspiration has come to me, probably coupled with other things that I've read. Even a bum living homeless on a bench, maybe he doesn't even have a bench, is still a life with, worth living and is still causing the increase of life for that individual. Now, say that they live and die on that park bench that will still be a life that was worth living because life doesn't end there. And there will continue to be an evolving process of growth as an individual, even after we die. Every single life, God's plan didn't fail. He wasn't like, oops, I didn't think about that part. Every life is worth living. A seed dropped into the ground springs into activity. And in the act of living produces a hundred more seeds. Life by living multiplies itself. It is forever becoming more. It must do so if it continues to be at all. Even the bum on the homeless person, I don't really like the word bum, the homeless person on, you know, on the streets is going to have experiences which will be a part of that person's continued growth throughout eternity. And it will, they'll look back and they'll see that, wow, I didn't see how that benefited me, but totally benefited me. That I got to experience those things that I did. I, they'll have learned something from that. And through the evolving process throughout eternity, they will continue to become. Everything is in the process of becoming. Everything. No matter what we might think with our finite minds and how we might judge things, everything is becoming. Intelligence is under this same necessity for continue, continuous increase. Every thought we think makes it necessary for us to think another thought. Consciousness is continually expanding. Every fact we learn leads us to the learning of another fact. Knowledge is continually increasing. Now you could be ever learning but not coming to a knowledge of the truth. The truth of how to take your experiences and your circumstances to more favorable ones. Going from a car that doesn't have air conditioning that works and the windows don't roll down in an area like Phoenix, Arizona is not a very favorable condition. And yet there are people who are experiencing that condition. No air conditioning in their car and you can't roll the windows down because the electronic windows are broke. Okay, and they're still driving around. Um, you could be ever learning but not coming to a knowledge of the truth and that's why we must be on a personal development journey and and creating those dream the, the dream book was a huge piece for me going to that dream workshop for three days and learning how to dream as though it was already accomplished was the beginning really for me of not having to drive around in a car that the windows won't work and you know the AC doesn't work. Now that wasn't my condition, but driving around a car that smoked out the back and it wasn't my dream car, right? That dream book was the beginning of bringing on you know, this life that we now live. Framing up my thoughts in a certain way. It, the dream book was just framing up my thoughts. Think about that for a second. Talk about the dream book and you're like, wow, a dream book. How did he make it? And what was in it? And can I look at it? It was just arranging my thoughts in a certain and scientific way, thinking in a certain way, like he talks about in here. That's all that dream book was. It was framing up my thoughts in a certain way that I consistently and consecutively held. That was it. What thoughts do you want to consistently and consecutively hold? So every fact we learn, okay, so we, uh, consciousness is continually expanding. 
Every fact we learn leads us to the learning of another fact. And, and the, the problem, it wasn't a problem, but I think for some people, the, the not being teachable, not being open. And I can say in faith-based, but I could also say in people that are not faith-based, they're just as bad as people who are not open that are faith-based. That there, there are people who look down the nose at people who are faith-based. And, and so it goes both ways. I guess just coming from my perspective, I, you know, I'm surrounded by more, I guess, faith-based people, I don't know, um, where they're not open to a movie like The Secret. And so they just keep regurgitating the same things and the same messages that they keep hearing from the pulpit and won't read books that aren't by those teachers and, and those leaders. And so therefore we remain stuck. Um, knowledge is continuously increasing. Every talent we cultivate brings to the mind the desire to cultivate another talent. We are subject to the urge of life, seeking expression, whichever drives us on to know more, to do more, and to be more. You gotta be as wise as a serpent too and harmless as a dove. I've seen things out there that, um, okay, as a faith-based person, I might stretch myself to be open to learning about something else and it is totally not the right thing. <laughs> it is totally about mysticism and, and strangeness. And what do they call that in the Bible? Peeping wizards and something like that. Um, and, and going down a whole trail that those people's lives who are promoting that are not any better than mine, you know, in, in that state of me having to drive the car that's smoking out the back. And yet they take it on as a religion and as something that is the answer to everything, and yet their lives still are not the life that I want. I don't want those results they're getting in their lives. So you do have to be careful in what you're gonna allow yourself to be open to. I really, that's why I would say, you know, can't go wrong with Bob Proctor. Uh, I haven't heard him teach anything um, that would fall into that category. And Wallace Waddles, Raymond Hollywell, working with the law. Um, you, would, you would get enough for a lifetime to learn how to start changing the results between Bob Proctor, Wallace Waddles, and working with the law. If your life hasn't changed after reading those books, go back and read them again. In order to know more, do more, and be more, we must have more. We must have things to use, for we learn and do and become only by using things. We must get rich so that we can live more. The desire for riches is simply the capacity for larger life seeking fulfillment. Every desire is the effort of an unexpressed possibility. There's the little kid at the piano. There's me behind the drums. You know, there's me on the dirt bike. There's me as the isogenics associate wanting to create other fourth level leaders that create other fourth level leaders that create a ripple effect that can't be stopped. <laughs> unexpressed possibility to come into action. It is power seeking to manifest which cause desire. That which makes you want more money is the same as that which makes the plant grow. It is life seeking fuller expression. That's, you know, that's a lot to think about right there. That which makes you want more money is the same as that which makes the plant grow. It is life seeking fuller expression. It is, uh, it permeates and penetrates everything. The one living substance must be subject to this inherent law of all life. It never wants to take away from anybody. That would be against its nature. That would totally be against its nature. To live in want and in poverty is to not align yourself with the divine. And to come up with excuses of living in want and poverty as God's will would be to be denying the divine. But remember, it's not going to take from somebody in order to live. Look, the tomato plant gives back every year. It gives out and it gives back. It goes right back into the soil, but it also goes out and creates more progress. It, it creates more life. So it's simultaneously giving and receiving. And that's the law of compensation, the divine law of compensation. It's creative. It's not competition. The one living substance is never in competition. 
And if you're not giving in order to receive, then you're following some philosophy that's in some way erroneous or incomplete. The one living substance must be subject to this inherent law of life. It is permeated with the desire to live more. That is why it is under the necessity of creating things. The one substance desires to live more in you. Hence, it wants you to have all the things you can use. It is the desire of God that you should get rich. He wants you to get rich because he can express himself better through you if you have plenty of things to use in giving him expression. He can live more in you if you have unlimited command of the means of life. But then your mind, why, why is that wrong? If you're asking why is that wrong, then your mind will go into competition and taking things from people and not giving back. Your mind can come up with an answer as to why that could be wrong, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about creation, more for all, less for none. I wrote that many times on my affirmations. More for all, less for none. Me taking the sunlight doesn't take any sunlight from Jojo. All right, uh, let's see what else. The universe desires you, you to have everything you want to have if you do it along the lines of the law of compensation. So you gotta figure out, how do I do that? How do I live the law of compensation? How can I give more to somebody and yet receive you know, tenfold? Well, again, you gotta be as wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. You've really gotta look into that. You gotta think, you gotta, not be mentally lazy. How can I do that? Well, I put two and two together with the products. It was an inestimable amount of value that I received from the products. Inestimable. There was no price you could put on the value that I received from the products when I put them in my body. I was spending an, an incredible amount of money getting the energy that I needed to get me over the fatigue so that I could provide a living to keep the food and shelter for my family. And, uh, it was, and it was ruining my health. And then the Isogenics products, I got them, I put them in me, and all of a sudden I had this incredible energy and it was building my body up. It was creating, it was taking away the, the, the mental fog and giving me mental clarity and, and, You know, the, you know, you got to know some more of the background. I used to break open my kid's piggy bank so I could buy Rockstar energy drinks. Now, my intention was I was going to pay my kids back that money that they had in their piggy bank, and I did. I was searching for money in used cars that were turned in. They were traded in, and I would, we have to look over those cars and see if they're worth fixing up and reselling. And our Company had integrity. They wanted to know if truly there was value in the car to sell it or would they wholesale it? Wholesaling means they would sell it to somebody else that would be on a used lot that would sell it, you know, for a cheaper price. It wasn't worth us messing with it. I would take the seats out of those cars because there was always money hidden in the crevices. There was always change, quarters, dimes, nickels that I would be able to scrounge up and use to buy an energy drink, a rock star. All right. And so now all of a sudden I put these products in my body. And after four days went by, I realized I hadn't even thought about a rock star or the coffee that they gave us for free at work. I hadn't even thought about it. And realizing what those products had done for me. Now, transitioning that to I was watching it happen to other people who were asking me what I was doing. They proactively asked me. I didn't proactively approach them. They came and asked what I was doing because they saw I was a walking, talking billboard. And, and uh, I saw the same thing happening to them. And when somebody told me, hey, I got my dad's bike out. He hasn't ridden it in 10 years. And so the tires were rotted and I had to buy new tires for uh, his bike. And he's out in the neighborhood riding his bike around. He hasn't ridden that thing in over 10 years. He was a diabetic. And uh, hearing these stories and having that as my experience right up front with the products being shared without me sharing them proactively, does that fit in line with more for all and less for none?
like they had to buy the products from me, even though I wasn't proactively sharing them and I wasn't making money from that transaction because I didn't enroll them. I was getting them from the person that I had won them from. Even though they had to pay for those products, were they getting more value out of that than what they were paying? Here he is riding his bike that he hasn't ridden in 10 years. What does that mean? He's out engaged in life. And he's, he's in, I mean, I love how it feels to be out riding a bike. You feel more free and you have the wind blowing through your face and, and you get to hear things and you get to observe things. And it's like all of a sudden that camera that you've been looking through just got a bigger lens. It was like a fisheye lens. You could see a lot more because their health was improving. What's that worth? And to me, I would have paid any price for that. I was already robbing my kid's piggy bank. I was already looking for change under the seats of cars. And that program in Isogenics cost me less than what those addictions were costing me. It cost me less. And yet it gave me a bigger perspective on life. So, you know, was now, if, if that universal spirit is the desire to have, what does it say here? Let's go back to it. The one living substance must be subject to this inherent law of all life. It is permeated with the desire to live more. Was, was Jason's, in parts, dad living more because of what I just shared? Was he experiencing more life? from those products that I had shared with Jason and then Jason shared with his dad. Absolutely. So was there a desire for me to wanna to share those products? You tell me. What has my life come to represent? I'm not sharing the products. I wouldn't devote as much of my life as I have for selling a product and making money. It's this one living substance must be subject to this inherent law of all life. It's permeated with the desire to live more. That is why it is under the necessary of creating things. The one substance desires to live more in you, hence it wants you to have all the things you can use. So that product and allowing others to live more life was the answer to all, pretty much all the dreams in my dream book that I had made five months earlier before finding Isogenics. Do you see the non-coincidence in that? And it all had to do with the way I was thinking. That dream book had everything to do with the way I was thinking, how consistently I was thinking, how passionately, how emotionally attached I was to the things that I was thinking. And I'll say that there are things that I do want and that I wish for that I haven't backed up with the consistent consecutive emotional thinking that it takes to then have that thing. because it doesn't come easy. But the things that I really, really want, I'll really, really, really make sure that I do that. And you know that affirmation of wanting to be a fourth level leader, creating other fourth level leaders is something that I really, really want. And so thus the template showed up and now it's manifesting. And I could cut it off at any time. I could just start changing that thought and make it the exact opposite at any moment. And so life has lived on a razor's edge. And if you don't know, that razor edge will keep cutting you. And so thus we're doing this Zoom because I know so many people really, 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 really want their isogenics business to create a lifestyle of freedom and impact. And there's only one way you're going to get it. Identity. Not positive thinking. Identity. All right? So first 30, 60, 90 days you have to eliminate all other distractions. You just have to eliminate them and not try to compete because you'll either love the one or hate the other. You really don't hate the other. You're just playing favoritisms on and off again. You have to eliminate the distractions. And some of you who are so close to busting this thing loose, you, you should really be connecting with and, and knowing what I'm talking about right here. That those little distractions, it could be family induced, it could be environment induced, it could be the news, it could be politics. 
It's a jealous mistress. And uh, Neville Goddard talks about that. And, uh, and if you're trying to juggle a couple different mistresses, bachelors, then uh, you're not gonna have either one. You'll have a little bit of all, but you won't have totally what you want of the one. And you have to become hyper-focused and eliminate that's how I did it in the beginning. I eliminated all distractions. I eliminated all distractions. And just like Paul, this one thing I do. This one thing I do. And like Eric Worre, that one time of doing that, wow, look at what it's created. Now I've done it in blitzes, 30 day blitzes, 30, 60, 90, 120 days, maybe once or twice I've done it but I know I did it for sure in the beginning. It's the most memorable to me. So do you really want it? All right, I'm gonna open this up and just uh, unmute everybody. I'll unmute and then I'll mute it back with your ability to unmute yourself. <laughs> okay, so you have the ability to unmute yourself if you want. I'm going to mark where we're at. Anybody have anything they want to share? Nobody? Dave, this is Cindy. Hey, Cindy. Hi. Um, I was just getting ready to leave the meeting, but I heard that and I'm like, what? Um, Because I have some family coming in. So, as a, you know, as a woman, I'll tell you my mind, um, I'm constantly um, multitasking and I know that that doesn't work. I'm just, let me just share first here. And um, so I'm multitasking, I'm thinking constantly and I've tried, I sit down and I do my 10 and 10. And that is the thing I find the hardest is to get my mind to focus and to stay focused on that one thing and you said you know for 30 60 90 days how you know so many of us are so close and i feel that and i know that you know um but to, to to eliminate all the other distractions that i'm also very passionate about um and that things that i have in my life um it's just it's like that's the part that I struggle with because I know that something like this. So then what you have to do is, is you weigh that out in a scale. Are you living the life that you want to live? If you're not living the life of what you want to live, what do you have to do to do that? Right? So, I mean, you just said right there, you, you use the word also instead of, but, but we could use the word, but there instead of also, I'm also very passionate about. And so you could have said, but, I'm also very passionate about. And, and, and it's right there in that also, you're in the driver's seat. And so yeah. if you love your life and the way it's going, nobody's gonna say you're doing it wrong if you're living the life you love to live. If you feel that you would like more than you're currently experiencing, then there's a decision that needs to be made. Right, yeah. So I, I just have a feeling that there's a lot of other people out there going through exactly what I want, like really, really wanting. So is there anybody out there listening to this call that wants to share right now? Because um, we can, I know that if we follow this and I know what you're saying is correct, <laughs> just need to learn that mental focus. So that's the, that's the thing there. So the way that I overcame that, because look, I'm like anybody else. I could be squirrel. I am today. I mean, I picked up motocross, I played the drums, I'm now playing the guitar. Um, the way that I did it, those first 30, 60, 90, 120 days, quit my job because my team was replaced my income, was I was either listening to something like Bob Proctor or Wallace Waddles, or I was listening to, you know, very limited things. It would have, back then it would have been Bob Proctor on his audio, because that's really about all there was back then. I had his CDs. I don't think audio books were even out yet on the level they are now. Uh, so I was either reading the book or listening to Bob Proctor, or I was doing my affirmations, 
or I was doing an isogenics business activity, an income producing activity. Those were the three things. So I had set my schedule up and my focus being surrounded around those three things. And, you know, I had a very loving, supportive spouse that, you know, I'll, I'll say picked up the slack. I still had to earn a living and uh, I still had to go to work. And Wallace Waddles is going to get to that, you know, how to outgrow your current position while you're creating that new identity. Um, and it not being in the way, like, I didn't go to work saying, dang, I hate this job. It's keeping me from doing isogenics. That was the exact opposite of what I did. However, those were the three things that I surrounded myself with. We got rid of cable TV. TV was not on in the house anymore. Um, and we had young kids at the time. So uh, that's how I stayed focused. I was either listening, reading, doing my affirmations, or doing income producing activities. Those were the only three. And that's like, Paul, this one thing I do. And I knew that that would open up. It'd kind of be like being squeezed through an hourglass. Carrie uses this you know, analogy of the sand hourglass. I'm getting squeezed through that hourglass. And so is everybody else around me that's close to me, Carrie and the kids. And uh, then it opens up though, it opens up into having so much more. And I knew, I could see that that would be the case and that I needed to be a certain person in order to have everything else open up. I could see that, you know, and I think most of us can see that, but I don't know that most people realize the light at the end of the tunnel. It doesn't have to stay like that. But in order for me to become what I needed to become, I needed to squeeze through that hourglass. And those that are closest around you are gonna feel that squeezing and they need to be a partner in that and they need to be supportive or, you know, good luck with that. All right. So um, hopefully that helps. I think that's a great point that you bring up, Cindy, because. You know. Yeah, that helps a lot. All right. Anybody else? Yeah, Dave Alejandro. Hey, Alejandro. Hey, man. Well, I just want to say thank you. I, you know, I suffer from the multiple mistresses and distractions, but um. You know, I've made this my number one opportunity. I got to eliminate a few. I ultimately just want to say thank you. That message was powerful. Uh, I'm glad I got on to listen to it. I know now that I have to get on these trainings more often because it's our awareness that gets sharpened. I love it when you said uh, how our, we should be in alignment with our minds. If it's a sound, clear thinking mind, it's always looking to evolve. And we always have that need to go to the next level. Uh, and how that's that is a characteristic of that higher power to constantly push us to the next level. So that's that's really powerful because at a time like today where a lot of us are just settling with just being mediocre, since most of us are doing that, it is the popular thing. Uh, but it's good to hear that, you know, we were meant for more, you know, so we have to constantly push ourselves uh, to get to the next level. So it's a uh, a lot of the stuff you said is stuff that I've heard before, but it's refreshing to hear it again. So uh, more and more, I realize that the more I hear stuff that I need to hear, I got to become a part of that more often to make it my own eventually. We just don't get enough dosages of the right stuff. So yeah. thank you again for that message. You're welcome. And what you bring up goes right along with something I just thought of with what Cindy was saying. And I remember hearing this from a mentor of mine. You know, that power that's coming to and through us, it wants to express itself in as many ways as it can, as it can. multiplicity. And uh, a mentor of mine said, the universe, that power that comes to and through us, if it goes unchecked, will chew you up and spit you out and throw you away like a used rag. It, and what I mean by that is it, Hey, if you can express yourself in 10 different ways, it's going to get you to feel to do that. It's a discipline. This is being as wise as a serpent, as harmless as a dove, and being wise. That's why Paul said, you know, this one thing I do. Could he learn how to discipline that power that's coming to and through him? I, the, that power could cause you to be so stressed out at the end of the day and so like not having accomplished anything 
because it wants you to accomplish everything. If you give it an inch, it'll take a foot to go in that direction. If you give it an inch in this direction, it'll take you a foot to go that way simultaneously. You have to take that power. It's not God himself as an individual. It's God's modus operandi by which he carries out his will. And that power that comes to us is just like electricity coming through the wall. It could run the blender. It could run the dishwasher. It could run the dryer and the clothes washer and the, all the lights in the house simultaneously. Yeah. However, you can't. <clears throat> you cannot. You could be a jack of all trades, you know, and, 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 and be good at a lot of things. But if you really want to take your life to the next level for you, your enjoyment and for the impact that you make, this one thing I do, and that takes a discipline. It takes a discipline to hone that in and focus. And we've seen anybody, Michelangelo, I watch these guys on YouTube that can do stuff with cement and a little trowel, one trowel, and what they can do with that thing. But they're not going and trying to figure out how to master wood and, and metallurgy and, and, and all of these other things. They've mastered that one thing. And that's what they do, and that's how they beautify the world. And how they I, wanted, I, wanted, I wanted to add to that too when you mentioned that in terms of you well in every area or every you know uh every discipline in life i noticed that the best people are those that have concentrated their energies on that one thing and somehow the universe rewards them with the best of what they what they can find on those higher levels when, when you hear of a musician that's done great like you said, he's been at the studio practicing forever. And because he's been putting in that sacrifice, the universe grants him the best, the best, the best tunes. And everybody's like, right. the guy is genius. But the thing is, he spent enough time doing that to the point where he managed to get to those high levels of awareness where the tunes come in very clearly, almost to the point where they could just go and duplicate them at the studio. I'm a visual artist. And I remember the days when I was disciplined to do comic books and draw from life and everything. There were days in the studio where I can go and see a page right before my eyes. All I had to do was just lay it out, essentially. It was all there. And I said, this is amazing. It's almost like I can see the image before I can draw it. I think it's like that for a lot of things we take on, even in network marketing. I think the more we, we sacrifice and put into the discipline and have great leaders like yourself and everybody else here, learning from a great leader will lead us to that greatness as well. Because... You're, you're pointing the pathway. And that's what makes it really hard with good leadership is really having that map laid out for your team. I, I, that's why I admire that. <clears throat> because again, that's all part of you dedicating that much effort to make sure you have those pathways ready for your team. So thanks for letting me speak. <laughs> yeah, no, no, great stuff. I appreciate it when you guys do. Thank you. Um, you know, two, a person that wants to build two network marketing companies at the same time, Man, I see that right away as, you know, erroneous. Um, it just isn't going to work. I mean, I, I, again, you know, that's just an example. But trying to do all these other things in life while you're trying to launch your network marketing business to a, the height and success that I'm believing you want to and doing all these other things. It doesn't mean that you eliminate. I mean, you still got to shower. You still got to eat. You still got to, you know, pick up after yourself but they're not distractions. You're figuring out, like I'm in my mind doing my affirmations while I'm making the bed or while I'm at work, right? And uh, there's times where my work took 100% of my attention, but most of the time it doesn't. And so uh, again, just holding that out as an exposure for you to think about some things. Kristen or Kirsten, were you gonna say something? Okay, anybody else before we end up here? Uh, go ahead, Kirsten. Can you unmute? You're unmuted. Or Diane, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was just thinking a while back you said, because you're doing all this mental uh, stuff, but you said well, as soon as you found out about isogenics, you put all these products in your body, which gave your body the ability to have the nutrition it needed so you could focus. So you were doing things with your mind, enabled by what you put in the body. Absolutely. You started on the forever pack, I suppose, right away and whatever else, right? So that yeah. you're powering the physical body 
to have the strength at every cell level to do the mental work. Oh yeah, I say that it was, I mean, that's, it was all built into the dream book that I had too. Yep. All the dreams that I had built up in the different areas of my life, it couldn't have been anything but isogenics. Yeah. You know, there's the, the power and greatness of God, you know, and that wireless communication system, that cause and effect, yeah. Yeah. that knows the answer to everything better than you do, better yeah. than I do. And it just partnered me up. Now, God didn't wave a wand. He waved his wand 7,000 years ago. But he didn't wave a wand. He went through the same process that we go through. He held an image in his mind, and it collapsed around it. He didn't get a shovel and start moving dirt around, not even a big backhoe, to move the dirt around to make the earth. Mm -hmm. The thinking stuff collapsed around the right. power of his thought and his concentration. And I look forward to the day when I'm going to be able to do that. Jim Rohn says, well, if you don't like how it is now, it's too bad. You're a guest here on this earth. When you make your own world, then you can make your own laws. <laughs> you know, but he, he has a connotation, connotation there. When you make your own world. I absolutely believe that that's a possibility. Way mm -hmm. down the road, when I really get my mind under discipline. But right now, I'm creating my own little micro universe. Right. As I woke up, I was half asleep and half awake. I just started thinking about the, my entire universe that I created around me. And then I started seeing how other people had created their universe around them. And it was just the coolest feeling and zone that I was in this yeah. morning to sleep. Well, you've let every cell connect with the nutrients it needs in order to empower that ability, right? Oh, yeah. Without the products, I wouldn't be where I am today. Mm -hmm. yeah, every I couldn't have maintained this focus. That's yeah. why I make sure I cleanse every week and why I put the products in my body every day. Yeah. Because I'm expecting a lot out of myself. Yeah. And the fuel that's going to allow me to do it. All right, good, good stuff. Anybody else before we check out? Dave, this is Kathy. Um, what was the name of that audio class that you were talking oh, about? Raymond Holly, or it was Raymond Hollywell's Working with the Law. There's a book for that, but they kind of, they do what I'm doing with the Science of Getting Rich. They don't read it word for word, but they pick out different points from chapters and they talk about them. And it was, uh, just working with the law, if you Google it and put in Bob Proctor, working with the law. I can't okay. remember the name of the program. Um, it was something law was in Okay, it. so they're working with the book by Hollywell. Yeah. In the class. All righty, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? I have something, Dave. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just want to reiterate I love this visual and it's the visual that there's this big, huge net and inside of the net are balloons. And we are just like bopping out one balloon at a time, but God has this entire flow sitting there waiting for us. And I think the hardest part is taking the time to do the mental work that you've done. You know, I've been scripting out your two hour thing so that I hear Every word, I see it, I can look at it, and then I'll, of course, adapt it to my life. But God truly, or the universe, wants us to have that flood. And I love what you're saying because the belief is coming for me through the affirmation. So that's creating belief. The more affirmations I'm writing, the more I see how a customer should look, how business partners should look, the more, I don't know if it's worthy, but just the more open I am, to just pulling that whole load of balloons on top of myself. Yeah, yeah, good, good, good description. I like that. That's it. It's all about the identity, guys, not just positive thinking. Thanks. That was awesome, Dave. Right. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. Okay, you guys, have a great week. We'll see you next Monday. I'll get this posted in the Facebook group and on YouTube. Uh, I think it's week 13. All right, thanks, guys. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Dave, so much. Thanks, Dave.